Mirage has been a lot of fun, but in my time playing, I've noticed some things that I think could be done better. These are just some small changes to things I wish I had more time to develop to story changes. I enjoyed the new addition of poles to get across wider streets, but in my playthrough, there wasn't enough for it to genuinely matter. I'd completed the main story and quite a lot of the side content and I'd only used them about twice. So I'd like to see more of these poles around the map to make getting across wider terrain easier. Social stealth being back was a lot of fun and it wasn't anywhere as useless as Valhalla's implementation, but I still didn't find myself using it or being directed by the game to use it. I believe the way it works is you need three NPCs around you to initiate blending and then you can blend with two NPCs from there. This is incredibly annoying considering how sparse the crowds are. As you can see, I'm constantly running into two people I could blend with. A lot of good opportunities for blending here missed, which is why I would much prefer a system in which you only need two other people to blend so that blending can be pushed more in the story and can be used more in the open world. That's it for the smaller, more immediate changes. From here, these are things that I would have liked to have more development time or to have been a bigger focus in development. A parkour mod along with an official update have come out aiming to improve parkour, making things more reliable, allowing for manual and side ejects, that kind of stuff. I haven't used the mod, I'm lazy and stupid, but post update I can confirm back ejects can happen, although sometimes you just drop straight down, losing all momentum. Side ejects can sometimes happen. But most of the time you get this little leaping across animation if you try to do a side check. It's all very controlled and it's clear the game is constantly checking to see if you can do something before you're able to do it. I understand why they did this, the common complaint of leaping off buildings, but it just takes away a lot of the player control. Ultimately, general work on reducing jankiness, improving input delay and allowing for more user expression in the parkour could lead to a better experience. Speaking of parkour, the parkour down is very unpredictable and sticky. It's clear a lot more time has been put into the parkour up system to make it more fluid, faster, but I would have liked more focus on this aspect. It didn't need to be a unity level, but at least better than Origins or Odyssey. The detection system does work, especially compared to Valhalla, but that doesn't mean it's without its jank. I would just, just make it a little bit more reliable and easier to use and understand in terms of the notoriety. After I kill everyone or even one person, why is still not letting me become anonymous? Oh, I have to be a certain distance away. That definitely doesn't make me want to shit all over the floor. But to be fair, there have been. Updates have fixed a lot of the jank that previously happened. So good on the devs for that. And for in general, just in trying to improve the game. This game is very much trying its best to create an old school Assassin's Creed game in an engine not designed for it. Which is why it's impressive, but not extremely innovative. This complaint has been lobbied at the franchise for a while, but specifically in this return to form game, people were looking for something familiar. And that's about all the game provides except for maybe the assassin focus. In imagining things to shake things up and add something new, I think maybe a wall running system similar to Prince of Persia or, or Mirror's Edge, allowing for Basim to sprint for short distances across the walls, maintaining his momentum and then jumping across, grabbing under architecture, that kind of thing. Like the initial run you do towards a wall, but able to do that horizontally, diagonally and keeping the momentum. There is a stripped down contextual animation that is similar to what I suggest in the game. If you approach a climbable wall while pressing the climb button but keeping your direction somewhat horizontal, you can do a wall run up that somewhat resembles the wall run I'm thinking of. It is very rare but I got Basim to cancel it about twice through some photo mode shenanigans. I didn't record the first one unfortunately but ultimately it is quite inconsistent to perform and cancel. I would have it be more manual, user input based, a quick movement stick, motion, camera, placement, something to initiate it. As well as have it be cancelable, you can jump out of it in the direction you choose like the manual jump you already have but with the improvements I mentioned being able to go up and sideways and the like much more reliably but you keep the horizontal momentum so you can jump from wall to wall while going forward grabbing onto architecture as well as using it as a handhold to leap. I'm unsure where to put this if it belongs in the gameplay or story section as Basim evolves among the assassins. Like in the CGI trailer I would have loved for Basim to have worse parkour skills initially, play more like a free runner on the ground and then gradually have those skills build up throughout the games eventually gaining the parkour skills of a master assassin. Maybe an RPG skill tree if I have to compromise. A big thing about the story 
that affected my enjoyment and a lot of other people's experiences is the disconnected structure of it for the most part it can be completed in almost any order and i find myself switching from investigation to investigation doing what's easier which makes it harder to connect emotionally i'd make the story more linear so you can connect and flesh out each arc character and antagonist better while i would make the story more linear i would expand on the gameplay the black box system from unity and syndicate returns along with the problems that i've had with it what these missions usually consist of is one path for an assassination that leads to a cinematic a glorified optional cutscene mission like the optional objectives of old i just find this annoying sure you get a reward for doing the extra marks on the map but this really takes away from the whole approach it how you would like aspect that should be the focus as a result, I found myself reluctantly doing each sub-objective, following the narrow path, and eventually doing the assassination exactly in line with how the game tells me to. A linear experience isn't bad, but it can get old when it's so uninteresting and constant. You can get rid of the cinematics altogether, just reveal opportunities to the player, but keep them as disconnected as possible. Just an infiltration method through getting a key, just a vantage point, just a disguise, and so on. Allow the player to create the route, like the Hitman series. If you really want some linear experiences, that's fine, but just make sure they're interesting and not time wasty, with you running around the map aimlessly, chasing icons to do busy work to unlock a cutscene. Getting back to the more story-related aspects of the game, I wouldn't make Basim a master assassin, at least not in this game. Him becoming an assassin in this game is good enough for me. There's a lot of time between the end of Mirage and the beginning of Valhalla for him to become a master assassin later. Also, the fact that you only get a talisman and an outfit arbitrarily, unlike in Ezio where there were multiple ceremonies. I mean, even in this, there's a ceremony for when he becomes an assassin. I would prefer it not to happen at all. Or, you know, have a bigger deal made out of it, a ceremony, a story beat, anything really. Ultimately, I've had a lot more fun than the more recent entries in this series. It's easy to request these changes in retrospect and with no restrictions from higher up. So I appreciate what the team has done. I've been impressed with what, they've, with what they've been able to do in Valhalla's en engine. Creating an old school experience, slash feel, making parkour more handhold based, faster, a detection system that works and feels fair, a notoriety system, social stealth, that is there. I mean, I am by no means a game developer, but with the little I know, it must have been a difficult task. And the game works, which is, I guess, my standard for games, or uh, AC games right now. There's been rumours of uh, this studio producing more AC games, so I'd really so I'd love to see them take their helm in more of these games. Mirage also seems to have been somewhat of a success for Ubisoft, so this direction for uh, the future of AC isn't too bad for me. Whether that future is uh, continuing with Basim, there's much more uh, There's much more to explore. There's a lot of time between when this game finishes and the start of Valhalla happens, so we could see a sequel with him, maybe returning to Constantinople, or if it's a new protagonist, new place, that could be interesting to see as well, but I think a lot of people are missing the edge days of having one protagonist to kind of tie all the games together especially with the lack of modern day if the hub infinity rumors are true the modern day will take a back seat so having one protagonist could give the brand some recognition it hasn't had since the Ezio times i mean a lot of a lot of media featuring assassin's creed still uses Ezio as the poster boy there's a reason why he's so popular 